Hello and welcome back to the Longevity Learning Lab. Today we're going to take a look at some of the capabilities of the MIG welding side of the MIG Weld 200S. It's a 60% duty cycle machine that operates from 200 to 30 amps on the MIG welding side. It also is capable of stick welding from 30 amps all the way up to 180 amps in the stick welding mode. So let's take a few moments and look at some of the welds that we can make using the MIG welding side of the MIG Weld 200S. So here are the settings on the machine. You can see the process knob is selected to MIG. The MIG torch spool gun knob is selected to wire feed. The wire feed speed is set at about number 6. The voltage or MIG setting is about midway. And the waveform is about number 8. Now I was going to weld up some A500 grade B. So I decided to take a couple of practice welds here on the material to see how it worked out. So I kept moving side to side, trying not to get too much of a crown on the weld, keep moving along at a steady travel speed, and trying to keep that arc on the leading edge of the puddle. So I decided to make a small adjustment to that waveform knob and turned it down to number 7 and then went ahead and make a second weld. So here's the second weld. Once again, trying to move side to side, not staying right in the center of the puddle for any too long of a time, making sure that it ties in okay on both toes, but also making sure that I don't get too much crown, which can be an issue with a lot of people when they do gas metal arc welding. So I took a look at the bead, was satisfied with what I had, and decided I'd take a crack at the real thing. So after tacking the two pieces of tubing together, I made a dry run and went ahead and gave it a try, based on those same settings that I had in the previous weld there. So once again, tried to make a small circular motion, moving forward on the bottom side of the puddle, keeping the wire on that leading edge and wanting to make sure that the puddle stayed full but not too full watching the toes to make sure that it wets out on the sides of the material and that we get a nice even and consistent weld bead across the full width. So that looks okay. So now let's take it on the other side. Now I could have flopped it over on its side but I decided to go ahead and take this weld in position horizontal position exact same settings and once again trying to keep a small circular motion keeping on the light leading edge of that puddle being real careful in this horizontal position to not try to put down too much material it or a gravity will grab it and start to pull it down and we'll get sag and we run the risk of getting undercut along that top edge so with that one being welded up pretty good we decided to feather in the ends of the next weld So I used the edge of the flapper wheel to kind of taper off the end of the previous weld and also the tack weld on the other side to get it cleaned up and ready to weld so that I could tie in good at the ends of the weld when I made the next attempt. Okay, now we're set up and we're going to go ahead and make an attempt at this next side here. Same thing small circular motion watching that upper toe to make sure that we don't get any undercut watching the size of the puddle to make sure it stays full and kind of wrapping just around the corner and making sure that it ties in well with the next weld so with that one taken care of we decided to go ahead and feather in the last edge here and finish up the fourth weld around here so we've got that cleaned up blend in the end there a little good get it cleaned up and ready to go so here we go gonna take a same path we have before small circular motion once again notice there's a little bit of spatter but not too much I'm using straight co2 gas here about 15 to 25 cfh 
We could get a little cleaner weld if we were using 7525. And then once again, pay attention at the end. Make sure you go slightly around the corner and tie in with the previous weld. Okay, I decided I uh, was feeling good about the setting, so I flopped the uh, tubing over on the side here and decided to go ahead and see if I could make a 3-8 vertical weld over that previous about 3 16 inch fillet weld that I had made there just a few minutes ago. So once again, trying not to stay in the puddle, in the center of the puddle, for any too long a period of time. Keeping that wire on the leading edge of the puddle, kind of tracing that leading edge back and forth, back and forth, watching on each side as I go to make sure that it ties in and I'm not getting any kind of undercut or excessive crown on the weld. So this is the first one I made with these particular settings. I didn't make any changes to the machine at all and it looked pretty good based upon just a first trial run.